Hello and welcome. I'm Maria from Sew Through Time, and this time we're taking a deeper look at 1890s hair, specifically evening styles. First of all, like in all, basically all of the Victorian era, a bun is the basic way of dressing up your hair, and your hair would always be dressed up when you're in public, if you're an adult woman, that is. And this sort of casual, basic bun would be perfectly okay for daytime. And I have a video on how to do this and I'll link it somewhere above. <laughs> and, but now we're taking a look at evening styles because this style does vary a little bit. And of course there are different variations and different styles and different things done throughout the era. I am specifically gonna look into one style from the beginning of the, 1890s, one from the mid 1890s, and from one from the very late end of the decade. And the reason for this is because fashion changes quite drastically throughout the 1890s. In the beginning, you are very close to the bustle eras, and the silhouette is basically just a less butt <laughs> version of the what was fashionable in the 1890s. And that is very clear in the hair too. And then as we get further into the 1890s, especially 95, 96, giant sleeves get ginormous and you have the ginormous gigo sleeve. And that is basically to make your waist look as tiny as possible. You have very wide skirts, very wide shoulders. So your waist in comparison looks tiny, even if it actually isn't tiny. And then as we get to the words the end, the silhouette again softens and you get already that first view of that, what will become the pigeon bust era and that what will become the Edwardian era. And that is also visible in the hair. If you do like this video, I would really appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up because it really helps with the algorithm and then maybe more people will see this who would enjoy that. And now, when it comes to hair, you don't ever see quite as wild hair as in the 1830s, but there is very much reminiscent of the same style. And one of those thing, features that really does come over from that is the height. Because for the, like I said, for the previous 20 years, buns had been covering the back half of your head. But now buns start to come really high and some are literally on top of your head. And there, especially for evening wear, starts being all kinds of knots and bows and fancy weird things. So to achieve that look, the first thing you do is um, section out the front of your head. It doesn't need to be like super clear sections and the thicker your hair is, the less hair you actually need for this front section. I, because my hair is long, super long, I tend to just take a tiny bit on the side of my face and then of course my bangs because I have bangs, but this works just fine without bangs or you could do, do like false bangs. And now, this section goes up in a ponytail. They didn't have the same kind of hair elastics as we do, but I'm gonna use a modern hair elastic that I apparently forgot to take, so I'll go get that, and then I'll come back with showing you how to curl this front bit. Okay, I use a curling iron with a fairly small barrel, but not like one of those really tiny ones, and I just, curl my bangs. There we go. 
And now basically the rest of the hair is just in a ponytail. So what we do is I am getting choked. Let's not choke me. Okay, <laughs> that's better. So what you do, could do now is for um, a style that like mimics the earlier style, you could throw this in a bun that covers the back of your head. You could do a figure eight, whatever you want to do with this. But because we're going now for a more formal evening look, we're going to go for a high bun. But I'm not going to do this all in one go. I'm going to section it off to two. It doesn't need to be equally divided, just whatever. And then again, twist, 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 twist. Because I find that a lot of these hairstyles are a lot easier to do with twisted hair because that way you get that kind of hold and grip without having to um, use a lot of hair product and because they wouldn't have used a lot of hair product in this era. So we're doing a not extreme like high hair. We are going for sort of earlier look. So I'm just twisting it onto the top of my head, but I'm le letting it lay flat. And then the rest of my hair, I am just loosely take a grabbing and So that you can see. There we go. And then I'm kind of forming a figure eight and then I'm going through the top loop and then through the bottom loop to kind of hide my ends. And then I'm just pinning this. And here is the finished early 1890s hair. And now for the mid 90s. Since in fashion, the Gigo sleeve is a redo of the 1830s, the hair is kind of a redo of the 1830s too. Instead of those really structured side curls, you'd have volume on the side. So the best way I have like figured out to do it, with my hair at least, is like flip my hair here in the front so that I kind of leave these like side flips and then I just lift the hair up again because like in the 1830s the top hair is very much in the middle of the head and then again we twist it because that is really the easiest way to do these buns and again like I said previously in the last hair do again Fuzz and frizz is a, like the thing. It doesn't need to be and shouldn't be super neat because it is not what the fashion was. You don't want the hair to coil in around itself and you want to leave the end free. And now what we do is we make a knot and we gather the ends through, but we don't pull that all the way through. We leave a loop and then because my hair is too, a little too long, we'll tuck this in eventually. But first, before I do that, I wanna make sure that I twirl it in a way that I don't accidentally end up making it too tight so that these sides stay loose and fuzzy. If your hair isn't this long, uh, you could use false hair for either this bit that goes around and you could just do a ponytail with like a flip, one of those like mom buns, or 
If your hair isn't even long enough for that, you can just put it on in a small ponytail in the middle and then just do all false hair around. False hair was, you know, the normal way of doing hairstyles in this era because even though there was a trend for like extremely long hair like mine in the late Victorian era, most women still did not actually have extreme length hair. And here is the finished mid 1890s look. I added a hair comb in the front. And now for the last bit of the 1890s. As we get towards the turn of the century, the Gibson girl ideal already starts to happen. And so we get the Gibson girl pompadour. A, a pompadour is basically that this front section that is puffed up in a way. There are many different ways of doing this and there are endless variety in how the hair is puffed and how big it is and how much of the sides are puffed too. But because I have done a few of the Edwardian versions and a lot of them would be, especially the earlier ones with the really big roll, would be also appropriate for the late 1890s. We're doing something a little different this time and I am just grabbing a bit of my hair. I don't want to take too much, and this is way too much, towards the sides. There. We want to take just the por top portion, and I don't want to take a very thick portion because my hair is so long and this is going to be rolled up, so then it, the roll would end up ridiculously big. If your hair isn't this thick, then you'd take a thicker portion to, like, give the roll a roll some volume. And then I just pin the roll down. I use bobby pins. In this era, it was also very common to like wave your hair in different ways. So like a waving iron or a curling iron would be excellent for it like adding wave to your hair. But I'm not going to bother with that right now. And we are going to just lift this back portion up. And we're going to, I'm going to get my hair all up in a ponytail. I'm grabbing a more modern elastic, but you can use whatever you want. And I don't want to put a tight ponytail. I want to leave air in between the ponytail and my scalp because this room is needed for it to fluff the proper amount. And then I don't put it very like tightly. I just do it twice. And because a bunch of my hair is already in this roll, it's not actually like tight yet. And then I just secure it with bobby pins. And you don't want it super tight because easily then you won't be able to like manipulate the hair in there anymore. And you want to be able to do that. There. I find that like if I cross two bobby pins, then it stays fairly securely in place. And then if I like anchor the whole thing then with a third, then it usually stays well enough. Now for this portion, you can twist it or turn it however you want because basically as long as it ends up in a bun, that's the main goal. And we don't want to add any more ridiculous height. So I will just kind of coil it around itself and then just tuck in the ends. And here is the finished late 1890s hairstyle. And that's it for today and I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you again next time. Bye!